Hello, television viewers, I'm Nick, and the television event we have been waiting for has finally arrived! Over two months ago, we, along with Travis Kelsey, met 50 memorable young women. Who could forget Selma from Connecticut, or Crystal from Florida, or the girls from states like New Hampshire, who were eliminated before we even saw their face? And now we're down to the final four! I feel like I know all of them so well at this point, and... I would be remiss if I didn't honor each of these 50 contestants with a musical number. Hit it! I said, who's gonna catch Kelsey? I said, who's gonna catch Kelsey? I said, who's gonna catch it? Actually, you know what? We cut. Yeah, I was huffing a lot of spray paint when I came up with this song and dance, and the part of my brain that feels embarrassment is starting to reactivate. So we're gonna, I'm gonna actually put a shirt on. That's probably really humiliating. Travis brings the final four, Lauren, Veronica, Maya, and Avery, on a huge yacht after telling them that one girl will be eliminated tonight while the remaining three will fly with him to Kansas City where he lives during the football season. During the yacht trip, he spends one-on-one -on -one time with each of the girls, and Maya wants to open up about her difficult past. I'm sure she does this, but not in any of the footage we see. My parents wanted me to go to college, so I did what my parents wanted me to do. So I graduated, and then I wanted to do fashion and, you know, build a brand. Mom, Dad, I don't want to go to college. I want to do fashion, build my brand, and start a career. Can't you see that a college degree is only going to get in the way of that? During Travis's one-on-one -on -one time with Avery, she expresses an uncomfortable level of curiosity over what happened when Veronica slept over Travis's during last week's date. Like, to the point where almost nothing else is discussed. Then we get to hear Maya throwing up for a little bit. That's nice. Lauren decides to get more aggressive with Travis, while Veronica and him have a relaxed time as usual. At that night's elimination, it's clear that Travis's stylist had a few pieces that she was just dying to see him wear before the show ended, which is why he turned up in a brown suit with a dress shirt that had a studded collar and bright yellow sneakers. Yes, darling, men's fashion means looking like a show horse who's had its birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. Travis speaks about every girl, and then every girl has a chance to speak about him. This takes forever, but it gets good when Avery is the first girl to fall into the verbal trap of sounding kind of like she just said that she's falling in love with Travis. I didn't think it was possible to find love on TV, but it's happening. Up until this point, the unspoken rule is you're allowed to say that you're having feelings or you're feeling a connection. Call me old-fashioned, but I don't think two people should drop the L-bomb until after they've seen each other's genitals for the first time. With a bold move like that, Lauren is swiftly eliminated. Lauren, I'm gonna miss your country rocker girl vibe and your awesome smoky eye. The next day, the three girls get on a private jet with Travis to Kansas City! Have you noticed that not one person has opened a bottle of champagne on the show without the cork popping and surprising everybody? How do they still all not know how carbonation works? They all dance on the private jet, which is clearly not large enough to accommodate dancing. Travis tells the girls that they will each be having a date over the course of the next two days. And first up will be Avery. At the hotel, all three girls spontaneously try harmonizing. At Avery's one-on-one -on -one dinner, this poor girl is once again told that she has her walls up, and she seems like she's kind of fed up with defending her feelings to Travis. I like you. Whoops. And here we are, and here I am. And I like you, so there it is. What more do you want me to say here? Travis is my moon. He's my sun. He's a magical trickling waterfall into a blue lagoon that I just want to bathe in until my uterus is swollen with his babies, okay? Speaking of blue lagoons, the couple happens upon a fountain, and Travis narrowly avoids shattering his skull by falling backwards into a stone tub filled with shallow water. Avery gets to spend the night at Travis's place after, where he decides to be really sweet. Has anyone ever told you that your eyebrows just, like, are overpowering everything on your face? <laughs> That's so funny, you know, because no, actually. Nobody's ever told me that any part of my face was unwelcome. Except for you now. Thanks. The next day, Avery is grilled by Veronica and Maya over what happened at the sleepover, but she, like Veronica, tries to stay tight-lipped about it. For Veronica's date, that morning they go on a sightseeing trolley. They seem very at ease with each other, and they go to a whiskey bar, and then eat barbecue, and they seem to have a great time. My date with Ronnie was 
incredible. It's so effortless, it's so natural. There's nothing more romantic than two people making out when their mouths smell like they've just eaten a bunch of meat. Before his date with Maya, Travis calls down Avery from outside the hotel for some reason. I thought I'd come over here um, out of the respect that I didn't put you through another day of sitting around and waiting on me to bring you to elimination. I'm gonna have to ask you to head back to Colorado. I know you have trouble trusting people, which is why I wanted to reject you when you didn't see it coming. Surprise elimination, mother I am such a good guy. When Avery tells the other girls that she's gone, they can hardly contain their joy. Next, Maya is getting ready for her date, and I don't know why this is the first time we're seeing her hair like this. This is her best look yet. She gets to go to an event for Travis's charity, which is called 87 and Running. If you want more info on what this organization does for underprivileged kids, don't go to their official website because the about page is completely free of any text whatsoever. Conveniently, this is the charity auction that the final five made their disgusting boob painting for last week. And the Cancer Research Fashion Show seems to be modeling only that Kansas City merchandise that we've seen each of the girls wearing up until this point. Maya's personality really comes through during this date and I feel like I'm seeing more of what she's like in real life. I understand this Maya a lot more than the blunt talking game player that they've portrayed her to be up until now. Travis gives a speech sounding completely terrified the whole time. I couldn't be more proud to see everybody in here uh, come support me. All I want to do is be able to influence people in the right way and um, you all are making that dream come true. So. My accountant told me to start a charity to save money on my taxes and I sound like Adam Sandler when I get nervous. Thank you all for coming. After this event, Travis and Maya go back to his place, abandoning an entire plate of leftover meatballs in the process. Get a to-go box, that's gonna make a really weird breakfast sandwich tomorrow. Veronica is curious about Maya's sleepover, but surprise, it turns out nobody likes invasive questions about their sex life. Travis and his manager Aaron are hitting golf balls to talk about everything. I actually left the room during this part, so I don't really know much of what happens until this. Hey man, whoever you don't pick, can I have? I'm not sharing. Hey, you only can pick one, man. Oh, the end of the last episode. That's when Aaron decides to show even a little bit of personality. Cool, if anyone's interested, I found his email address on that vacant charity website. Maya and Veronica take two separate limos to the final elimination because this show wants to waste fossil fuel the same way it wastes airtime. Travis points out the poetry and the fact that Maya was Travis's first date pick and Veronica was his first VIP date pick. At this point, it's kind of impossible to tell who he's gonna choose. I should also mention that the build up to this reveal is completely ridiculous. There are at least 300 commercial breaks in a matter of five minutes before Travis Travis finally breaks out into a monologue about how Maya is basically just like all of the girls he's dated in the past, and he came on this show because he needed a change from that. And Veronica is that change. But um, even though my mind's telling me one thing, I gotta go with my heart. Veronica. I'm sorry, sweetheart but I'm gonna have to ask you to go back to New Jersey. And for the twist ending, Travis will state all of the reasons why Veronica is perfect for him and then choose Maya anyway. It doesn't have to make sense. We're producers, not writers. I actually think Travis made a great choice because after this episode, I really like him and Maya together. But I think this fake out was kind of clumsy. If it had been done right, it wouldn't have felt so manufactured for shock value. It's like the difference between learning that Bruce Willis was a ghost all along and learning that Dorothy was dreaming because she got hit in the head by a window. Travis and Maya share their final kiss and then he takes her upstairs like in an officer and a gentleman. And that was the end of all murder, war, and sadness. For mankind had happened upon its truest love, sprung from the pure holy waters of an eight episode reality show. Travis, you. Whew. It has been such a blast recapping every episode of Catching Kelsey. I want to thank all of you so much for watching with me. So tell me, what do you think of Travis's choice? Will he and Maya be together forever? Also, let me know in the comments if there's any TV I should be recapping next or what other types of videos you'd like to see me do. I am really looking forward to your suggestions. Give this video a thumbs up for even more clip breakdowns. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button, which is my face right here, or that button down below. I've got a lot more new videos coming and that way you won't miss a single one. Thank you again so much for watching and a big thank you to the whole cast of Catching Kelsey. You've all been such good sports and super cool. It's been great getting to know you all. I look forward to seeing what each of you do next. I will see you all next time.